Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today is taking a look at a mono white God Eternal Oketra deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the 5 mana 3 6 legendary zombie god with a double strike, saying whenever we cast a creature spell, create a 4 4 black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. And when Oketra dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, we may put it into its owner's library third from the top, so that's in addition to potentially sending Oketra back to the command zone. So of course our deck is incentivized to include a lot of creatures to trigger Oketra's ability, and that's exactly what we've done here. Taking a look at the breakdown, our deck is mostly creatures, we're pretty aggressively slanted, and we've got some disruptive elements as well to slow down the opponent's game plan. So starting out with our 1-drops, we've got Thraben Inspector making a clue token when it enters to later draw a card. Selfless Savior perfect for protecting our key creatures like Oketra, making them indestructible. Isamaru a nice aggressive 1-drop as a 2-2. Two -two. We've got Hopeful Initiate that can train to pick up plus 1 counters, can also remove those counters to potentially destroy an artifact or enchantment. Giant Killer were mostly playing for the chop down adventure to destroy a creature with power 4 or greater, but as a 1-drop it can also easily trigger Oketra. And then Esper Sentinel is perfect for this deck, as a nice disruptive creature that can potentially draw extra cards. And then a Dauntless Bodyguard we want to play after we play Oketra, so ideally we have 6 mana, play Oketra, play Bodyguard protecting Oketra, so we can sacrifice it to make Oketra indestructible. And then the Elsate of Life's Bounty can also be sacrificed for 1 mana to give protection to one of our creatures. Then at 2 mana we've got Adanto Vanguard, which we can make indestructible at the cost of 4 life, so shines against more controlling decks. Luminarch Aspirant, even after the Alchemy nerf, is still quite powerful, giving us an extra plus 1 counter every turn. Ambitious Farmhand finds a Plains when it enters the battlefield, to make sure we can keep hitting those land drops, so we can play Oketra. Then there's Captain Eberhardt from Alchemy, giving us a 1 mana discount on cards we draw for the turn, and making the opponent's spells 1 more expensive if they've just been drawn, and then a 1-1 one -one double strike also scales nicely with the various Anthem effects in our deck. We've got Cathar Commando, can be flashed in as a 3-1 and can be sacrificed to destroy artifacts or enchantments. Eidolon makes opposing Planeswalkers cost 1 more to activate. Intrepid Adversary is a great mana sink, potentially pumping our team. We've got Core Skyfisher, which has great synergy with Oketra, can play it and then pick it back up to our hand, so we can keep making 4-4 zombie tokens in the late game for each 2 mana we have available. We've got Loyal Warhound, which can potentially find a land if the opponent controls more lands than we do. Then there's Seasoned Hallowblade as another indestructible creature alongside Adanto Vanguard. Selfless Samurai is similar to Selfless Savior, can be sacrificed to make one of our creatures indestructible. Then the Sigardian Evangel from Alchemy is also great in the late game, as we can play multiple copies to make multiple 4-4 zombies in the same turn. Spirited Companion draws a card when it enters, perfect for this deck. And then Thalia, since we're such a creature-heavy deck, also makes a lot of sense, making non-creature spells for everyone one more expensive to cast. Then a Tithe Daker makes spells in our turn one more expensive for the opponent to cast, so great against counter spell heavy decks, and when it dies it leaves behind a 1 1 spirit token with afterlife. And then Ominous Traveler is another one of those creatures that can be played multiple times, finding a card from its spellbook, and then when we play that card we get to pick up the Traveler once again, it's another great way to chain together multiple zombie tokens. And Ornithopter of Paradise gives us a bit of ramp in creature form. Moving on to 3 mana, there's Angel of Eternal Dawn as another disruptive creature, especially against ramp strategies. Blade Splicer makes a 3-3 golem token when it enters the battlefield, and we have a few ways of flickering it or picking it back up to make additional golem tokens. Spellbinder will take a look at the opponent's hand to make one spell more expensive. Raidan makes all non-creature spells our opponents cast with mana value 4 or greater, two more expensive as well. We've got a Restoration, which can find a basic land and put it in play with the second chapter, essentially ramping us, so it's easier to play Oketra and a 1-drop in the same turn to make a 4-4 zombie token right away, and eventually transforms into a 3-4 that makes additional 1-1 tokens when it attacks or blocks. Vryn Wingmare similar to Thalia, making non-creature spells more expensive. Welcoming Vampire can draw a card once per turn if a creature with power 2 or less enters a battlefield under our control. Adelin makes 1-1 one -one tokens when we attack and has power equal to the number of creatures we control, so it can close out the game very quickly. Guardian of Faith can be flashed in to phase out our creatures, so that can save them from sweeper effects. We've got a Ranger, Captain of Eos, to find a 1-drop when it enters, so it can find all these different 1-drops, usually go for Selfless Savior or maybe an Esper Sentinel if we're up against a deck with a lot of non-creature spells, and can also be sacrificed to prevent the opponent from casting non-creature spells, so that can potentially prevent the opponent from countering Oketra in the first place. We've got Skyclave Apparition as removal, 
Banalish Marshall as an Anthem effect, Palladium Mirror can also ramp us for two, and then Wicker Wing Effigy is a nice one, letting us play creatures off the top of our deck in the form of 1-1 one -one birds. Then at 4 mana, Inquisitor Captain will find another creature alongside it. Ocatra the True is an indestructible god with double strike, but cannot attack or block unless we control at least three other creatures, but can also make 1-1 one -one tokens with the activated ability. We've got a Ranger of Eos, finding two 1-drops to put into our hand. Restoration Angel can flicker one of our creatures to save it from removal, or maybe re-enable an Enter the Battlefield ability. We've got Linvala, shutting down activated abilities of opposing creatures, and Solemn can help us ramp by finding a basic land to put on the battlefield tapped. And then at 5 mana, a few curve toppers include Angel of Invention to potentially pump our team, make some servo tokens in the process. And then a Guardian Savior can get back two creatures with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield if we cast it. Then looking at our non-creature spells, we've got Curse of Silence to make the opponent's commander too more expensive. Paladin class can pump our team, also makes spells in our turn more expensive for the opponent to cast, so once again great against counter spell decks. We've got Swords to Plowshares as a great removal spell alongside the newly printed March of Otherworldly Light, can potentially exile some white cards from our hand to help pay for it, and then we'll exile an artifact, creature or enchantment with mana value X or less. At 2 mana there's Kabira Takedown, which can be played as removal or a tap land, and then a whole host of 2 mana ramp artifacts, including Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone. At 3 mana we've got more ramp with the Celestis, as well as Heraldic Banner potentially pumping our white creatures. And then Ocatra's Monument is awesome, giving our white creatures a 1 mana discount and making a 1-1 token whenever we cast a creature spell. And then last but not least, we've got Key to the Archive to draft a card from its spellbook, and will also make it easier to replay Oketra, especially if we have to pay the commander tax. And then our mana base has a whole bunch of utility lands. Tyrite Sanctum is a nice one, since our commander is a god, so we can skip the first step and immediately sacrifice it to make our god indestructible. We've got some creature lands like Crawling Barons, Blink Moth Nexus, Faceless Haven, which is why we have all these snow lands, as well as Cave of the Frost Dragon. Few more utility lands, including Castle Ardenvale to make 1 1 tokens, can channel Igancho to deal some damage. We can sacrifice Shafet Junes to pump our team, and then we've got Bonders Enclave to draw extra cards if we control a large creature. So, yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Nicol Bolas the Ravager, Grixis Control. Our hand's okay, um, missing a bit of ramp maybe, but uh, probably still good enough to keep. Turn 1 is Amaru. Hope to draw 2 drop. If not, still have some good 3 drops to choose from. Ooh, perfect. Mindstone doesn't get better. I guess we'll play our white source, although I could see drawing a planes and then wanting access to Aiganjo later. Right, opponent's gonna stomp Isamaru, so now Adlin doesn't look quite as good. So I'll play Raidan instead. Could also play Protector Shield, is that worth it? Nah, let's go with Raidan. And then next turn we could already play Hoketra if we want to. Cold Steel Heart on black. Angel of Eternal Dawn is interesting. Doesn't necessarily prevent him from playing Nicol Bolas next turn. So. Ocatra seems fine. And then hope uh, our opponent does just play Nicol Bolas instead of removing Ocatra. If they were to kill Ocatra, I think we put it back in our deck, third from the top, instead of command zone as we're light on mana. Alright, opponent's got a brazen borrower to send her back to our hand. And they can play Bone Crusher at the very least. So they got a nice bit of mana advantage there. Hitting our land drops is still important if we eventually want to try and double spell. I think Oketra still the play here. Although there is something to be said for Angel preventing the opponent from casting an expensive spell with Cold Steel Heart. Solve the equation to find any instant or sorcery. Could just get a removal spell for Oketra, could get a sweeper. But we'll find out soon. Unlike a demonic tutor here, 
we get to see what they search up to make sure it's an actual instant or sorcery. Now we do have a Tyrite Sanctum in place, so that can potentially make our god indestructible. Extinction event gets around indestructible by exiling. And looking at our hands, it's incredibly awkward since all our cards are oddly costed. So not what we wanted to see at all. Now Raydan does make Extinction Events too more expensive to cast. And our opponent missed a Landro Plastern. I can sacrifice Mindstone and see what we draw. Hopefully draw an evenly costed card we can play right now. I think just playing two creatures is fine since at least the zombie tokens from Oketra will stick around. And there's always a chance that they don't actually get to uh, cast the Extinction Event thanks to Raydan. So we'll go with a riskier play. And then our opponent might jump Oketra, but then we get to keep our 1-1 one -one token at least. Alright, they've got the line sadly, so Extinction Event on Odd. Leaves our two zombies and our 1-1 one -one token. And now do we want Oketra back in our command zone? I think so. Can still replay Oketra for 7 mana. Although Angel of Invention plus Esper Sentinel is also tempting. Would leave me empty handed so Nicol Bolas is less threatening. Even though we potentially miss out on some tokens. And also lets me attack for more damage here. I'll make some tokens and hit for 12. All right, so hopefully they don't have another sweeper here. Battle Frost and Fire, ouch. Well, at least it draws a card, thanks to our Angel pumping Esper Sentinel. Don't have a creature land to finish out the game. I can replay Oketra. And then I should probably keep land and Welcoming Vampire in hand. So we can discard land to Nicol Bolas. Okay, so this game could slip away here if they can get rid of Oketra. Back-to-back -back sweepers will do that. Opponent keeps two cards on top. That's bad news. They've got one card in Exile that they foretold earlier. Could be an Alrun's Epiphany. Alright, opponent plays Nicol Bolas. Goodbye, planes. Get to untap. So we'll play Vampire, followed by Farmhand. Alright, so it coming was the foretold card instead. At least we still get a zombie token. And attacking with Oketra will force a chum block. And I can sacrifice a mines to an end of turn. Let's see the farm hands. Can transform at any point, so we could also do that if we want. Alright, is there a third sweeper? The fact that they counter the welcoming vampire implies that they don't. Opponent's tapping a lot of mana. Ooh, the Meat Hook Massacre for 4. Luckily does not get rid of Oketra. So no point in activating Farm Hands. Is there any point in sacking Mindstone now? I don't think so. Now if they might have some sort of uh, burn spell to finish off Oketra. That would be the worst case scenario here. But doesn't look like it. Alright, so we'll sacrifice Mindstone now. And then, let's see. Tyrite Sanctum, in addition to making Oketra indestructible, can also just put a plus one counter on it, even though it's already a god. And then, yeah, we would have a damage, which is enough for lethal. Alright, sweet. Close game here against Grixis Control. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Kodama of the West Tree. 
and we've got a nice opening hand. Turn one, probably fine with a Paladin class over Selfless Savior, since we might be able to keep it to make a zombie with Oketra. Turn one Elves is scary too, but now Mindstone ramping into Solemn is a nice start for sure. So both decks off to a great start. Oren Reef Ooze puts a counter on Kodama, does trample as well, so probably no point in jumping. Opponent gets to search up a land. And then can play Oketra and Selfless Savior if we tap carefully. So yeah, it doesn't get much better than this. And against Mono Green, Indestructible is pretty difficult to overcome. Now, of course, it could make their creature larger than Oketra, but uh, that's still not going to be easy. Varus joins the rest of the team. And a Gilded Goose. Alright, so now we're at a point where we would love to find some of our creatures that can basically keep making tokens with Oketra, something like the Skyfisher or the Ominous Traveler. For now, play Companion. And play our Palladium Mirror. Then I can still sacrifice Mindstone end of turn. Do we have any attacks? I guess our zombie token gets to attack. And do I want to attack with Oketra? Yeah, that's probably fine. Still have our Selfless Savior we can use. Opponent takes it. Verger Scarehulk, not bad. 4 plus 1 counters to distribute, to synergize with Kodama. So the ground is going to get pretty stalled now. Another reason to try and find one of those recursive creatures that can keep making zombies. Don't have any flying creatures either, so that's another... Good find, potentially. Gilded Goose finds a land. Ooh, Intrepid Adversary. Now that's a draw. Okatra the True as well. So how much mana are we working with? Six, seven, eight, nine. So can pump our team three times. And that should be enough for a powerful attack here. can potentially pump twice and then level a Paladin class instead. Although, don't really see a reason to go that way. And smash. Everyone but Selfless Savior. Although even Selfless Savior could attack, to be honest. Since we're probably going to sacrifice it here. A nice 6 9 Oketra. So let's see how much damage is coming through now. Yeah, even if Varus chumps, they're still taking 12, and most of their blocks are not looking all that great. So I can sacrifice Selfless Savior to save 
Spirited Companion. So your opponent falls to three, and they'll need something very special. It's gonna be a Primal Might killing adversary. That's a start, but at three life, they'll need more than that. The Great Henge, as the name implies, can gain two life. They've got a food token they can sacrifice as well. But is that enough? A creature to draw a card. Bankbuster for card advantage, so they've got the late game covered, but doesn't look like they'll be able to survive next turn. And our opponent agrees. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a red-green aggro deck. My hand's okay. Turn one Lavamancer, that's a scary card. Might have to keep takedown as an answer, but then again, we're also light on lands. So I think I still play tapped here. And then Apparition can maybe take care of the Lapomancer. Here, could go for Aspirant or Tithe Taker. Yeah, close call. Let's go with the uh, Tithe Taker here. As tempting as it may be to get the counters going from Aspirant. Domri is a good one too. Enough mana for a Wildwood Tracker. So we're putting off to a very aggressive start. Have to play Apparition here, and then I guess the Lavamancer is not that much of a concern without any cards in Graveyard. So we might just get rid of Domri over Galia. And ideally we pick up a land next turn. Can even flicker Apparition with Restoration Angel to do it again. Galia attacks. Yeah, Tithe Taker can block. Opponent's got a pump spell, unsurprisingly. That's okay. And there's a land. So Restoration Angel is an option, or we can develop Ornithopter of Paradise alongside maybe Luminarch Aspirants. And then Luminarch will probably be the target of removal over Ornithopter. No attacks. And I can put the count from Skyclave as a better blocker. Or I can diversify, put it on the Spirit token, or even Ornithopter of Paradise itself. So it can maybe block. Although at this point, our opponent is getting close to activating a Lavamancer. So I have to be a little careful. I guess we'll pump Apparition. Even though I might flicker it in the near future. Just don't want to have it killed with a 2 damage burn spell. Right. Domri's Ambush kills Apparition. But now we get to play Oketra. Which can run away with the game. And I'll put a counter on maybe the spirit token after all. Mox Amber for one extra mana. And a play with fire kills my token, that's fine. As long as we keep Oketra and get to untap and make a whole bunch of zombies, I'm happy. Shock kills Aspirants. So that can kill Galia. 
Soak up one damage, take five. Even with a pump spell, we should be okay. Alrighty. Can get started with companion, see what we draw. Ominous Traveler is very fun too. Although, somewhat tempting to keep up Restoration Angel. Or I can go Ominous Traveler plus Raidan, make more zombies, which is maybe the priority. What do we find? Dominating Vampire can steal a creature for a turn. It's probably fine, or we can take the Arch Ghoul, which synergizes with our zombies. Yeah, I guess that's fair too. How relevant is stealing a creature for a turn? Not very. I guess if I had one spare mana, I could steal a Lava Mancer and then use Ornithopter to pay for the red ability to kill another one of their creatures. But that's not the case here, unless we wait a turn and then play Raidan now. Alright, might be worth it. And attack. Could die to burn spells, which was a reason to play Protector Shield. But we'll see how this pans out. Hall monitor. Alright, so a lot of hasty creatures. Maybe a last ditch effort here. So we can line up some blocks. And our opponent has seen enough, yeah, so close game here against the red-green aggro. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a pretty interesting Zakama deck with Zerda as companion. So, can expect a ramp deck. And this hand has some nice tools, like Vanguard can be quite aggressive and Marshall to pump the team, although missing triple white. Don't have any ramp myself to get Oketra and play early, which is probably the best way to win the game. And we don't really have any disruptive elements. Cards to make non-creatures more expensive would be good. So I'll take a free mulligan here. Alright, this is a lot better, especially if we draw a land or two. Early Isamaru to get in some damage, and then Oketra's Monument to discount our white spells is one of our better cards. Opponent could have some sweepers as well, which we'll have to watch out for. Two mana, do we see a ramp artifact? Nope, just a lightning strike. That's okay. Next turn, Oketra's Monument, and hopefully turn for God Eternal. Leafkin Druids. They must have drawn recently, or maybe they didn't have the green mana for it earlier. As we get to play Oketra's Monument. They might have a token theme as well. Also explains Leafkin Druids as a way to make extra mana if they control lots of creatures. Key to the Archive, always powerful, so how close are they to Zakama? They've got six, seven... We're getting close. Opponent did take a card from Key to the Archive. So it could be all sorts of scary cards. Do I go for Oketra? Or do I try and maybe develop my mana with Ornithopter? And then a Wingmare can maybe slow them down. I think we just jam our commander here. And then hope to make lots of tokens next turn. Doomblade is what they found off Key to the Archive, sadly. Alright, so back to the command zone. Doesn't seem like an option here since we're very far from replaying Oketra. So... We will put it back in our library. Mm, 
Zerda in hand and they can play it. And next turn we could see Zakama. So doesn't leave me with a ton of great options here. So if they have another land next turn they get to play Zakama. Don't think there's any realistic way for me to stop that. Especially since I don't want to shuffle my deck with Inquisitor Captain. So I'll play some creatures out. Maybe play a Wingmare. It's gonna be Heliot Sun Crowned. And a 1 1 token. So now Leafkin Druid makes two mana and will be able to potentially cast a Kama, but now a triple block, I guess, could maybe delay that by a turn. So they're still not guaranteed to play Zakama next turn. And a Curse of Silence is actually a great draw. So that will name Zakama. And we're still maybe in this game. And then probably play Raiden. Plus Alsaid. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome. So Curse of Silence to the rescue. Next turn we can play Oketra, maybe play Hollow Blade, make a zombie. And then Inquisitor Captain can be played afterwards to get more value. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Ashiok Dream Render, so potentially a mill deck. Also shuts down search abilities, which our deck has quite a few of. But uh, this hand seems okay. Turn 1, maybe go with Hopeful Initiates. And then if I draw lands, we can wait on the farm hand and maybe play the Samurai first. Now I'm liking Ornithopter. And then could play Adeline next turn. Remorse probably takes her away. They could try and mana screw us by taking the farm hand, but then we still have Adeline plus Initiate as a powerful combo. And we draw a land anyway. Now, do I play Inspector is an interesting question. Could keep it until after we play Oketra. Or we can play it now just to pump up Adelin. And if we don't draw a land, I can sack the clue to draw a card. So there's Ashok. Dream be. Your final is Alrighty, so we can play Oketra. And then, don't even know if it's worth it to go after Ashok here. I think we just send everyone at their face. Opponent's at 9, so haven't even made a zombie token and our opponent's already potentially dead. They need a sweeper, but for a single black, best they can do is like an extinction event. I guess extinction event on odds would be quite painful. Still lets us keep our tokens and an ornithopter. Opponent does not have anything. Could activate Shafet Dunes in case they kill Adlin. I guess that's reasonable. Then we might still have enough to get there. As opposed to playing Samurai to trigger Oketra, which would be fun too. I have to activate it as a sorcery. Alright, opponent does have Libation. Just sacrifice a token here. And go face.
Yeah, so taking away the farmhand instead of Adeline did not pan out for them. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Azusa, Lost But Seeking, so a ramp deck, which is going to be a tough matchup, especially if we don't have any acceleration ourselves. This hand, you know, we can curve Initiate into Commando, we've got Apparition to Exile Azusa, which is just going to delay it by a turn. So is it good enough? I think the way we beat the Azusa deck is just by playing an early Oketra and then making lots of zombies, hopefully. So let's look for a different hand. Alright, this could work. Thalia could also be quite disruptive, although I don't think I want to play Thalia until I play Okatra's Monument first. So next turn we can play our Captain. Azusa has many journeys from Kamigawa, of course perfect for an Azusa deck. So let's get our Captain in play. And Monument lets us play turn 4, God Eternal. And we've got the Skyfisher to combo with it, so that's promising. Oracle of Moldaya is quite scary. One of the better cards in the Azusa deck. Still gonna play Plain since we need a lot of white mana to combo Skyfisher with Oketra. And then I can attack because I'm more than happy to trade for Oracle. And trading damage is fine too. Opponent's got a Return of the Wild Speaker on top, and we know about the Tarask in hand. They still haven't played Azusa, so maybe they just don't have a lot of lands. Nissa is going to let them play the Tarask on the following turn, so not what we wanted to see at all. Well, I can play Oketra. Uh, playing Thalia to slow down Nissa probably doesn't accomplish much. Could also play a one mana idol thanks to the captain here, but I think we're still better off playing our commander. So we'll do that. And then next turn, can play Guardian Idol, maybe play Skyfisher twice and Athalia, or play Oketra, we'll see. Beanstalk for ramp. So they're not going for Nissa here, which I guess is promising. They got pretty unlucky not finding any lands on top. Likeness, we will take three because we don't want them to untap their lands. Okay. So, what's my sequencing here? Can only play a Skyfisher three times at most. Might be better off playing Oketra Skyfisher twice, because playing Idol doesn't really help much. And then making this a one more expensive with Thalia. Also not all that helpful, but I guess we know there's Path of Discovery coming up too. So maybe it's still worth it to play Thalia. So I could go play Oketra, play Thalia, Skyfisher picks itself up once. Alternatively, could have played Cave and let the Skyfisher stay in play. So we can have a bunch of flyers to pressure Nissa. And the air opponent concedes, so our plan of an early Okatra making lots of zombies worked out here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Tiny Bones Trinket Thief discard deck. And my hand is okay. Warhounds does get a bit worse on the play than on the draw. But could still be a nice 2 for 1. Blade Splicer, good card as well. There's Tiny Bones. 
And then probably just play a Blade Splicer here. And attack for two. Try and be aggressive. Can leverage Paladin class. Although ideally we can play our Captain next turn. Fatal push on our tokens, a nice answer. Tiny bones attacks. And then drill bit gets to take any card from our hand, which is going to be the captain. Okay, so we can hang on to the Warhound and not play my land. Although against a discard deck, they're likely to just make me discard it. So I think we empty our hand and attack. And then next turn we can activate Paladin class to pump our team. Sure, they can activate Tiny Bones to deal 10 damage, but that costs 6 mana. Inscription to kill Eidolon. Can save it with the Alsaid. Although, don't even know if that's worth it. Yeah, I guess it uses my mana efficiently. And they could easily have some Planeswalkers in hand. Okay, Giant Killer I can also just play for one mana. So by playing Giant Killer we're potentially overextending into a Sweeper effect, but I think it's still worth it. And yep, yeah, opponent plays Field of Ruin and Concedes, so our aggressive game plan worked out against the discard deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing the Chaos Rider Devil Tribal of sorts. All our hand is okay. Can play Skyfisher on two, pick up Selfless Savior, or we can keep it in hand to combo off with Oketra. I'll probably hang on to it. Signets. I'm probably okay to exile with Apparition. And there's the Chaos Rider. Alright, so we get to play Oketra on 5 and then... Combo off with uh, Skyfisher, hopefully. With the Selfless Savior in play to protect. Although you never know what the Chaos Rider will make us discard. They're not gonna attack. Play Oketra. And I'll hang back. Dance with the Devils makes two 1-1 one, one Devil tokens. So reading the Chaos Rider, when we draw extra cards, they get to make Devil tokens. And when Devils attack, then a random draw and discard happens. When people start screaming, I know I'm on track. Alright, hopefully we don't lose Skyfisher. All right, just a Thraven Inspector. And then we'll kill it with First Strike. Goes after Selfless Savior. And they're trying to kill Marshall. We'll save it with the Savior, which would have died to Marshall leaving anyway. Alright, and this is where we get to combo off with Skyfisher. So, play this, pick itself up. Now, funnily enough, our opponent does have the random discards to potentially break up this combo. But otherwise we could keep doing this until the end of the game. And then 
probably want to pressure Chandra to an extent. So it'll kill the apparition. And given that they were blocking with two devils, there's no way for me to save Apparition by only dealing damage to one of them. Ogre Battle Driver? Alright, could be scary. But they still need to deal with this Oketra combo. And your opponent realizes that they won't be able to beat this engine. Sweet. Alright, so we get to see our Oketra Brawl deck in action. And yeah, if you can get Oketra down ahead of schedule, especially with something like Oketra's Monument, the deck looks quite impressive, being able to make all those zombie tokens against decks with a lot of interaction, especially counter spells, then it becomes a bit more difficult to get Oketra online, and you'll need to rely on the early aggressive start to get there instead. So not a perfect deck by any stretch, but can certainly win some games. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.